Hello everyone, Praise Skuda here, and welcome back to Mobile Legends of Zelda The Wind Waker. Last time, we finished mapping out the Great Sea, and even put the last pearl, Din's Pearl, into its proper place. And now, we can go to the Tower of the Gods. And well, as soon as I manage to hit R. Now, as much as I do, I have like a weird, fast not fascination, this, I guess a bit of nostalgia for doing that that style of editing I did for the past, I think it was seven or eight episodes, something around those lines. And I think it's going to be good to get back into proper episode structure. <laughs> Listen, I record every series I do that way if I could, but I realize people like proper openings and closings. Anyway, rambling aside, we enter the Tower of the Gods. This dungeon is... Kind of a dun well, this is the dungeon that happens in a lot of Zelda games or happens a lot at some points in games of Zelda's variety where it bridges the gap between also I'm just gonna blow everything up quick, hold on. There's always seems to be a dungeon or a major focal point of every Zelda game where it's just like, by the way, this is the big tone shift in the game where it switches from this Lackadaisical Adventure to Serious Mode. And the Tower of the Gods is that part of this adventure. But Tower of the Gods itself is a odd dungeon where you'll be dealing a lot with... Where you actually have being introduced to like five different mechanics. Also, I will apologize in advance if I goof up some buttons here. Oops! I'll apologize in advance if I goof up some buttons here. Uh, I have been playing... Not to plug myself over on there, but I have been playing a lot of, uh... I've been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild over on Twitch, so my buttons are all backwards. I don't care what you drop, I just want you, I want you to drop. But yeah, tide... well, like this, tide shifting is a mechanical to deal with out in this... Out in a, well, actually in a, quite a few areas of this dungeon. We will also have to deal with, uh... Got it. We'll also have to deal with a new mechanic that, like, the quote-unquote instrument mechanic, if you will. So we'll be dealing with that mechanic a little bit, and we'll also be dealing with a brand new weapon. Well, not a, not a brand new weapon, but it is a weapon archetype that is, that is in, or a weapon that's been in every Zelda game, actually. Oh boy, so much. Can, can I see how many of those I have? I never, I never looked at the end of la uh, at the end of my last recording session. <laughs> oh! Hey, when we get back to Windfall, we're gonna make somebody very happy. Anyway, so let's have some fun here. Now, right now, we can't do a dang thing in this room. Uh, say hi to a bubble. Oh god. Uh, right. You deal with bubbles by blowing air on them. I forgot this. Now, be careful with with. The bubbles, because I think you can kind of tell it from a distance, because bubbles, bubbles hiding in plain sight will have glowing eyes. Man, I'm used to the camera being way far out. Bubbles can be hiding in plain sight, but their eyes do glow a little bit compared to just skulls in the ground. And for the time being, our only way of handling bubbles is with blowing out, blowing the wind out from their sails. <laughs> and other things. Now, if you'll see on the compass, on the compass, the, see on the compass, by the way, if you'll see on the map here, the compass points out there's a chest in this room, which my big stupid kid head is in the way. Oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. What if I... Oh, it's only in this mode. Okay. But there's a, there's a treasure wall to come back for later. I did not know you could orientate the map like that in this. That is... Neat. But unfortunately, I am already stuck at this side, so I'm going to go to the other side of this place. Man, there's treasures down there, too, actually. Oh, no, that's t looking at the, fo the front dungeon. Anyway. Nice catch, King. Hey, good job. You caught me for once. So we will have to make our way over to the other side of the temple. But yeah, very... A lot of new mechanics we're going to be seeing here. Ah, 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 ah. Fine, I'll swim over here. But yeah, I'll be seeing several mechanics here and there while we play while we play through this. And a lot of it's going to be like tide control. Others going to be 
the various other forms of control. And that makes no sense. Trust me, it does. But it doesn't. But it does. Also, because we're gonna, we shouldn't need our grappling hook too much in this dungeon, if memory serves. Eh, reach. Okay, never mind. All right. <sighs> Here, hold this. Okay, I'm a genius and a moron at the same time. <laughs> I'm really glad we got those bomb crates, by the way, because now I can just be reckless with this stuff. Anyway. Uh, I didn't want to throw it. I wanted to drop it. Thanks, game. Uh-oh. But, uh, my dumbness aside, I will be fumbling a lot during this little opening bit, because I have to rework what buttons do what in my head. Again, because I've been playing Breath of the Wild recently, so... Breath of the Wild, A is drop. So I'm fighting that instinct. Oh! More. More. Just, just more. Drop that there. Swim away. Uh, I, it looks like... Oh. Get, okay, I didn't get lucky enough. Unfortunate. Oh, there's two of them, too. I didn't know bombs could, like, cause a seismic shock and stun them. I wonder, can I just put a bomb right there and be good enough? Uh, is that good enough? Yes, it is. Why? Let me move away from you guys. Go! Go! Ah, oh, come off it, please. I'm trying my hardest, but I'm just a small child with a dream and bombs. Now, I believe the timing on the floor rising, or the tide rising and lowering in this dungeon is, uh, is enough where you don't have to worry about ever drowning. It ne unless you're in the main foyer, it never will just drown you. Also, this was all for battling and nothing much more. I feel lied to. Remember how a while ago I said that, hey, I uh, don't remember much about this dungeon? I don't. Although I feel like there's something in the in these pots over here. So let's let's take a moment. Let's take a moment and put pull boxes around. And while I awkwardly maneuver. All right, tide's coming back at this point. So let's just hop back up and get ready. I'm impressed I was able to, like, mentally clock that out. And it looks like that's a wash. Although I'm going to hear that tide rushing out. I'm going to, like, panicking. Watch. Wait. Okay, here it comes. Panic? Are you seeing the panic? Are you witnessing my panic, sirs? Push. Thank you. Now watch this room be absolutely for naught. I always said I wouldn't bring it up, but I am going to bring it up. Remember, I have no recollection of the... It was for a joy pennant. I have next to no recollection of this game, so I will do stuff. I will be doing dumb things. Constantly. Meaningless tasks, you will. Trivial, if, as it were. Hi, King. Why did you come over here to wait for me? Yo, know, I appreciate the lift. You know what? I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Except you're a boat dragon. I'm not going to look a boat dragon in the mouth. Anyway. So these... These particular creatures we see here... Not going to seem like an issue for a little while. For a little while being the key word. We will be seeing an issue with them later. Hi. You're here. And I have a boomerang. There will be so much... A much easier way to handle all this in, a, in such a short amount of time. Anyway, uh... Ah, oh, yes, this dumb puzzle. Okay. So I say dumb puzzle, really, it's actually kind of cool. But it all revolves around this box. I will name him Boxy. And I will teach him the intricacies of life, death, and the number 47. 
Simply take Boxy, place him on a button. Now reminder, boxes float. So hustle your bustle. You'll probably won't make the cycle before the water comes up and it turns off the bridge as such. But if you just wait a minute, it'll come back. So we'll have a lot of time to sit here and just talk throughout this dungeon. I guess my, my most important question right now is because at the time I'm posting, uh, the time I'm recording this video, uh, episode, okay good, I took a risk there. Uh, at the time I'm recording this episode, episode 12 has just gone live. So I am recording far out in advance. I'm well, I'm well aware of this, and I know it's a crux and an issue I have with recording, but... I really do hope you guys are enjoying this game as a whole. And my... Odd... That's loud. And my interesting take on it in that... It's a... Uh... Okay, sure. Prophecies from a boat, man. I'll take it, Bow Dragon. I do hope you have an, are enjoying this project, because even though I am fumbling ever so not gloriously, I hope it's at least enjoyable to witness, you know, someone re, you know, reintroduce themselves to the series. I had to make sure I didn't have any keys, otherwise I was going to yell at myself. Now, we already have... At this point, we already have two of the major pieces of the puzzle to this to this dungeon, the, being the compass and the map. So you think, oh, you're. That's not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get off and it. It counted. Huh. All oh, this room. Okay. Oh, poop. So. Uh, this room, I do. This one, I do remember, and I would recommend you take a moment to push some boxes around and make them lined up just nice for yourself to work with. Some people who are more skilled at the game don't even have to push this stuff, but hey, reminder, I'm not. I think that's like a bare minimum effort you have to put forth to making this work. So let's do the bare minimum and see what happens. And why do I set why do I set up all this groundwork? Because I need this, I need fire, I need to jump across. And I need to light up the camera so I can just go straight without issue. And huzzah, issues have been resolved. Now the problem is Throw. You know what? Let him rock. That's what I need it. The only issue is as soon as you do that. Yeah. Roll. Recommend just running away. Especially when you have this quick second here. Not now, water. Oh, God! Ah! You thought you would win. But it's supposed to be this state that wins. I, I meant to do that. <laughs> just super cocky. Rolls in the wall. Planned! Entirely planned. Now we do have this key, and there's only one other place we can go that has. Wow, that is loud. That is like treasure in the ocean loud. Uh, why is that so loud? Anyway, uh, we have to take this. We do have to take this item and bring it over to. This door on the lower level here, which will act, it, which will be able to put in there and pr yeah, pave our way forward. As I said, we have to play with the tide. I think after this, though, we the tide playing is over, and we can just be dumb. Now, excuse me while I proceed to do smart things with my life. Did he drown it? Nope, he rose did. Now, unfortunately, this room, do we have to fight every single yellow chew in here? We can't take a shortcut. Also, it wasn't obvious. Yellow chews don't offer a unique uh, jelly. 
Also, off if it wasn't obvious, my aiming pr my aiming prowess lackluster. But defeating all the Chews brings up this stairway, which l lets us get the pillar of awesomeness and mightitude, and we can proceed through the dungeon as normal with it. Now I don't want you to completely forget this area down here because we will be back at a much later point in the dungeon once we have a key item for a single treasure chest. Lovely, I know. We're coming back for a treasure chest. But, yes, we will be coming back down for a single treasure chest which is located in the room we've just started in. But, two pillars down, we'll stop that water font. And it allows us much further into the temple, where we no longer have to deal with t with rushing tide, I'm fairly certain. If I'm wrong, hey, guess what? I'm wrong. I've never admitted to being the rightest person, but I will admit when I'm wrong. Now, now, Mr. Mr. Boat Dragon, you're going to have to sit there while I go up. Anyways, saying, I hope you guys have been enjoying the series, as dumb as it has been. And I hope I catch comments that kind of correct me on any statements I make. And if I catch them, and I don't fix it one way, I'll fix it another. Also, Beemos are here. And the rats are here. So, Beemos work kind of as you expect. Oh, I bring those across. Ow, okay, okay. I was trying to kill a rat, thank you. Kill a rat funk if you would, if you would. What if I just throw it? I was almost spot on. I'm gonna hit you. I have a feeling you're just put there to uh, interrupt everything I do. Why is it aiming so weird? Oh, because I'm standing next to a button. Goodbye, rat. I have an exterminator of the most extreme ow, extreme kind. Now tell me that was more than a green rupee. Also, other than hearts were max health. Ugh. Other than hearts were max health. Or other. Sir, this is mine. I'm taking him. Thank you. Simple buzzle. Sim simple buzzle. Simple puzzles, yes, it is a simple puzzle. Ugh, I can't speak. Simple puzzle mechanics. Wait, hit three switches, two with an animate objects, in order to activate things. This dungeon is. I'm remembering this dungeon more and more now, because the dungeon is. Hey, it's complex. Uh, I'm remembering this dungeon because it starts off. Also, I gotta look around the room. Bard off, bard off. Okay. It's it's weird in that it's another dun it's a dungeon that just uses your basic uh, movement skills and whatnot to get you around. But it oh, well you're new, huh? You're also new. Later. Okay, I tried. Listen. Genocide. It requires, you know, basic gameplay mechanics to get through, but the combat requires your weaponry. It's like the opposite of most Zelda dungeons in a way. It's that you use your weapons to def use your weapons purely to defend yourself and not to solve a puzzle, but everything else is just normal run, gun, and jump. Except when we get to this point. Say hello to mechanic number two. These totems or tikis. They will introduce us to a... To some form of... Movement and whatnot. Now we do have to kind of... Play slow a little bit here. And guide this... <laughs> guide this statue along this very narrow path very carefully. But... Once we get him across... We can do one of two. Th we can, well, no, no, no. Come here. Once we use the cross, we can pick him up. We couldn't go. Yeah, that's why. Okay, come here. Come closer. So we can pick him up. Now, I think I commented before, but Link. I, I don't know why, but 
as of now, Link in his current state is how the kids would say dummy strong. He's carrying something at least two times his weight, and he jumped a gap with it. Anyway, clearing out the enemies in that last room was a good idea. Because now we get easy access to the rest of this room without having to stop for any little pauses or anything. Also, we are introduced to the mechanic that takes us even further up this tower. We are still only on floor 2 despite having moved up an elevator. Floor 3 is kind of where the item of this dungeon comes into play a lot. And then we have a final climb. Oh, but that looks like Muzak. And this is where the king mentioned earlier about different time signatures. Uh, Wind Waker? Uh, hello? I, I did it. Oh, now it counts? God, God damn it. Uh, I'm not as smart, so we need to switch the we need to switch to the beats to four four instead of three four. So then we go eh eh. There we go. This is the command melody. I will guarantee you, you will get tired of this melody by hour thirty of your playthrough. Guarantee you. Control them and guide them to the places of truth to open the path of the gods. Wait, I was standing there. Why did you delete that? Well, we have our task set out in front of us, so I think next time on The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, we'll proceed through this clearly marked door and help his two siblings. Cousins? Brother from another mother. That works. You folks have a great rest of your day. Take care.